Hi guys, N0ECK here. Fall is upon us, as is contest season. And I've always loved my doublet for basically every band there is, except I have a vertical for 20 meters that seems to work way better. Well, to get that low angle radiation on 40 meters, I'm gonna put a wire in that pine tree. And we may see if I can also get 80 and 160 meters on the same feed point. The start of any antenna project is planning. I checked out my yard and did some math to figure out how tall my pine tree is. I got an estimate of about 35 feet. That's plenty tall for a 40 meter vertical. It also just happens to be pretty close to my 20 meter vertical antenna, so I can just use the conduit that runs feed line out there to run this new antenna's feed line back into the house. Usually, I will decide on a feed point next. In this case, I decided to screw a piece of PVC board to the tree, and I reused a piece from an old two meter vertical project. It already had the screws I planned to use to connect the radiators and elements, and I usually solder all my ring terminals, but this time I'm gonna just go ahead and crimp them because the antenna will be taken down in the spring and I can check them if I put it up again next fall. I bought a spool of number 16 stranded wire with brown insulation to hopefully help the wires blend into the bare winter foliage. 500 feet was perfect for eight radials at 34 feet each, one 34 foot radiator for 40 meters, a 66 foot radiator for 80 meters, and about 128 feet left for 160. Each wire is run out from the feed point to the first branch at a different angle. That's an attempt to reduce coupling in the high current portion of the vertical antenna. The 40 meter element goes straight up the tree, the 80 meter element climbs the tree and then hangs horizontally to the other pine tree in the south side, and the 160 meter wire is what I'm calling an inverted R antenna. It goes up the pine tree, across to the mulberry tree, and then up to the black walnut tree. For feed line, I decided on RG6. It runs over the ground and then is pulled through the conduit to the house. Any mismatch loss at those frequencies below 7 megahertz shouldn't be an issue and it will easily handle my 100 watt output. Besides, 500 feet is 35 bucks. If it doesn't work or it fails before next fall, I'm not out much. After flinging and tying off the wires, I hooked up a scrap of coax to the feed point and attached the trusty tenna dipper. I got a nice dip for the 40 meter wire, but it was a little below the band. I checked 15 meters just for the fish and saw it was almost perfect. I decided to go ahead and leave that wire a little long. I connected the 80 meter wire to the feed point and its dip made me very happy. I should be able to work 80 meter PSK without a tuner as the big dip was right at 3580. The 40 and 15 meter dips didn't change, so I was hopeful that the 160 wire would also work. After connecting the final wire, I was unable to check the 160 meter SWR because the antenna dipper doesn't go that low. But all the other dips stayed in the same place, so I was hopeful. Top band was always kind of considered a bonus anyway. After my lovely wife helped me pull the feed line, I connected it and hooked the dipper to the shack end. Everything was exactly the same as the feed point end. Does that tell you something about that feed line, huh? Mm -hmm. Either I landed on a magical length of feed line by accident, or the mismatch difference isn't enough for my dipper to read. It's hard to guess by the intensity of an LED. On-air testing proved very easy due to my recent purchase of an MFJ939 auto tuner. Without any tuner, I wasn't exactly happy with the match at the high end of 40 meters or 80 meters, and the 160 meter wire was beyond 3 to 1 SWR across the band. But the auto tuner matched everything within a blink, and I was working DX. And I'm not kidding. I put this up just in time for CQ Worldwide DX SSB contest weekend. The total mess of signals on 40 meters was hard to dig through, but I did a side-by-side -side comparison with the dipole doublet and the vertical had a better signal to noise ratio. The result was the same on 80 meters, and I was even able to work a few stations on 160 meters that I would have missed without that wire. I worked Africa on 80 meters on that wire. I know that's one of those things we don't like to do here is say, I worked this big DX on my brand new antenna, that means it works. Well. Yeah, but I worked Africa on 80 meters. I was pretty happy about that. 
it's possible that my improved signal to noise ratio was due to lower noise because the vertical is farther from the house than the dipole doublet, which is straight up. I learned that running multiple vertical wires from the same feed point is just as effective as a fan dipole, so that's bonus right there. I can't leave it up year round without bearing the feed line and the radials, but the noise on 80 and 160 during thunderstorm season makes that pretty pointless in my opinion, and I'm really not down in the shack that much in the summer. Either way, for this antenna, every location is different, so if you try something like this, go ahead and leave me a message in the comments or on Facebook or Twitter. If I'm doing it wrong, tell me there too. Thanks, 7-3 and join the resistance.